The Adventures of David Perkins. Like, subscribe, comment. Hello and welcome to The Adventures of David Perkins. This time I'm walking around Baconsthorpe Castle in the county of Norfolk in England. Baconsthorpe Castle is intimately linked to the dramatic rise and fall of the Hayden family, who lived here for some 200 years. Baconsthorpe Castle combined both domestic and defensive elements, and although it is referred to as a castle, these architectural structures of a moat, gatehouse and turrets were symbols of status rather than practical means of defence. The most substantial structures standing are the two gatehouses. The outer gatehouse was completed about the year 1560. It was built to display the family's status and formed an impressive entrance to the Haydens' home. Despite its powerful appearance, the gatehouse was not built for defensive purposes. This is evidenced by the building having large windows and a lack of gun loops. The massive three-storey inner gatehouse was the earliest structure at the castle. It was built by John Hayden in the 1450s as the first part of a grand courtyard residence. Originally, access to the inner gatehouse would have been via a drawbridge, which has since been replaced by a static wooden bridge. The inner gatehouse was an important symbol of John Hayden's lordship. The will of his son, Sir Henry Hayden, describes the castle's rooms as being luxuriously furnished with feather beds and silk curtains. When built, the inner gatehouse was large enough to serve as a self-contained, defensible residence. However, its large windows did make it vulnerable in the event of any serious attack. It is proposed that the building, therefore, was probably only ever intended for defence against small-scale local attacks. The inner castle was divided into two courts, the service court and the main house. The service court contained stables, kitchens, a bakehouse and a brew house, as well as accommodation for the family and their servants. The surviving East Range and the now flooded North East Tower retain various features related to the wool industry. The tower contains what appears to be a turnstile, perhaps for the admission of sheep for shearing, and a sunken tank possibly used to thicken cloth. The most important building in the main house was the public Great Hall, used for entertaining guests and holding feasts. Adjacent to this was a range of lodging chambers for the Lord's entourage, each with a private latrine, housed in external towers. The main house, situated beside the inner gatehouse, housed the Great Chamber, a place where the Lord and his family had their private meals. Below this was a cellar that contained a row of vertical handgun slots for the defence of the castle entrance. The site of Baconsthorpe Castle was acquired by a free yeoman, William Baxter, from the Bacon family in the early 15th century. The initial building of the castle, however, was begun by William's son, John Baxter, a lawyer who had risen to prominence as a supporter and agent of William de la Pole, the first Duke of Norfolk. John Baxter changed the family name to Hayden to disguise his family's comparatively lowly origins. During the War of the Roses, in the second half of the 15th century, John Hayden often switched political allegiances and gained a deserved reputation for being shifty, ruthless and grasping. John's son, Sir Henry Hayden, was knighted at the coronation of Henry VII of England in the year 1485. Sir Henry had held several highly responsible positions, which gave the family status and stability, and laid the foundations for the family's prosperity. Although the Haydens gained their initial wealth through the legal profession, it was the wool industry that eventually provided the bulk of their wealth. By the 16th century, Baconsthorpe was established as a vast and profitable wool-producing estate. Sir John Hayden II converted the eastern service range of the castle into a wool-processing factory. 
The wool industry brought considerable prosperity to the Hayden family, and the cloth produced here at Baconsthorpe Castle was sold both in England and exported to the Netherlands. On one occasion, Sir Christopher Hayden, descendant of Sir John, entertained 30 head shepherds one Christmas, suggesting that Baconsthorpe Castle presided over somewhere between 20 and 30,000 sheep on its lands. The profits from the wool industry were spent on lavish living and extensive building works, including the construction of the outer gatehouse in 1561. Despite the immense wealth being generated, the Haydens were poor estate managers. When Sir Christopher Hayden I died in 1579, he had accumulated large debts, forcing his son, William, to sell off parts of the estate. Yet despite these debts, the Haydens continued to spend large amounts on the castle. In the 16th, or perhaps early 17th century, an ornamental lake and gardens were added. Sir William Hayden II did try to put the family's finances in order, but alas he too died in debt in the year 1593. His eccentric son and heir, Sir Christopher Hayden II, preferred writing treaties on astrology to sheep farming, and the financial mismanagement of the estate continued. By the 1650s, the Haydens had amassed such a considerable amount of debt that they were forced to dismantle parts of the castle and sell the material. The stained glass window that had once adorned the banqueting hall was sold and is now displayed at St Mary's Church nearby. The window illustrates the advantageous marriages the Haydens made to other prominent local families, including that of Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife. St Mary's Church also contains several monuments to the Hayden family, including a memorial to Sir William Hayden and his wife Anne Woodhouse dated to 1592. The outer gatehouse survived the demolition process and was converted into a private dwelling named Baconsthorpe Hall. Baconsthorpe Hall would then be continually occupied until the collapse of one of its turrets in the year 1920.